All right, uh, hey guys, uh, do the shop here. Um, working on the uh, Giddings and Lewis uh, horizontal boring mill. Um, so I got it running uh, full speed uh, with the contactor all hooked up and a cord plugged in the wall. I'd been trying it out with the, the VFD, uh, just run the motor real slow, but now I got it running at uh, full motor RPM. Uh, having fun going through the speeds and feeds and checking out what all the levers do. Um, one of the things I noticed was uh, oil was getting wet on the bottom uh, near the feed box. And so uh, now that it was running full speed, it was splashing up, uh, this and that. And I'll show you, there's a a cover on the side of the gear case um, and I, th I thought it was leaking out the gasket but looking closer it was leaking out I think the uh, the shifter shafts so I got working on it I figured I'd pause and bring you guys up to speed with a video and take a handheld and show you what I have all right so this is a Giddings Lewis 25T. You can see I got the uh, the cover off the feed box, right? Um, so initially, uh, like I said, I thought it was oil leaking. Let me kneel down here. Um, kind of see. Let me show you um, inside first of all. First things first, right? Do this. So. Let me show you. Inside here, these gears are in fabulous condition, right? Um, there is the oil level, right? And uh, the gears right in front of you slide. I hope you can see all that. It's hard to see way deep in the back. I don't know if I've got depth of field to focus here. But these gears are just really in nice shape. See there's gears in the back. Maybe this is just too much for the camera. Um, gears over there. Kind of holding the flashlight showing you. This thing's got so many gears, but like I said, all the teeth are in just fabulous shape. Nothing's been, you know, bunged around or nothing. Uh, you know, no gear grinding going on. Uh, with the edges of the teeth. So that's super fabulous. I'm very happy, happy, happy about that. So anyhow, um, I thought, oh, there's the uh, the level for the oil indicator. Um, so you can see all around here, let me dispense with the flashlight. Um, back up a bit too. Let me sit on my bucket. Okay, better. Um, you can see this machine originally they laid down that red primer, red primer, and then the original color was like a, a beautiful gray color, which is a hint, hint of blue in the gray. Um, but this whole area was greasy when I got it, right? It was black, greasy black. Like, if you look, this is all black. This is grease inside. Well, I scraped a lot of it out, but the color is still kind of dark black. If I went over that with lacquer thinner, you know, she'd come clean more like that. But anyhow, I spent a ton of time cleaning this machine. And all this area in here was greasy like you wouldn't believe. So it was oily and then oil attracted the dirt and it just became a nasty mess. Um, so I do remember cleaning this and now that I had it running, it makes sense that the oil was leaking out there. So somebody used like Permatex number one, drying gasket sealant, number one or number two, it's hard to say because it's old. And uh, that's what they use on this flange because you, you could see it. It's that dark chocolate brownie kind of brown color. And I, if I thought that was it, then that'd be easy just to regasket it. But no. Um, 
those are my two shifters that came off and I repaired them. You see, when I repaired the, the braze joint there, and, and this one I painted gray, but this thing was so broken up. I mean, this was broken in multiple pieces. And I just ended up painting it silver gray, whatever it is. Um, so if you look inside, So these are shifting levers and these bronze pieces, I guess those would be considered the shifting forks that fork over the gears, right? So that's a one inch shaft on that top one and on the bottom one it's a two inch shaft so they're coaxial and I got the two inch shafts over on the bench because I was looking to fit an o-ring. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm fitting an O-ring uh, or two. So the one-inch shaft goes inside the two-inch shaft. So probably right in the middle somewhere, somewhere, I'm going to take this off, take the roll uh, taper pin out, put it in the lathe, size it up for an O-ring. So it, the one-inch shaft will seal inside the two-inch shaft. Now the two-inch shaft needs to seal in the gear case. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And uh, so I pulled this out the other day, day or so ago. So the the, uh, the bent leg goes down, the straight leg goes up. And to remember that, I wrote right on the, the the mill body, straight leg up, bent leg down. So incidentally, you'll see, I think this is an inventory tag, and it says SP46-3. So... I need to look up the serial number, but I assume this means this is that's an ancient old 1946 inventory tag. You know, maybe, possibly. I don't know. So the actual tag is. Bu -bu -bu -bum. You know what? Let's flashlight that joker. Alright. Type 251. 413 is what I see for the serial number. Oh, type number 25T. Yeah, not 251. 25T is the regular table. I think RT is the rotary table. This is the plain table. So 25T, serial um, 413. So that's cool. Um, anyhow, a while ago, I replaced all the uh, the oilers, the Bijour oilers, and you can see uh, I, I wrote the numbers on the machine of what the the, the Bijour replacements are. MSA two for the top, MTC five. You can kind of see there's a white sealant on that. MTC five. Uh, this is an MTG5 that's right there. That's kind of cool. So I kind of just, you know, making sure I got the right MSA00, zero zero, MTA. Oh, you see that? MTA00. Zero zero. Um, come on, where is that one? Down in the hole is an MTG3. Uh, this is where it comes out from the pump, by the way, and this is just a T. Um, MSA00, and I think that's most of them. But anyhow, uh, so for the vertical column ways, I got a Gitz flat top oiler cup, right? And there's your gib, and uh, Kind of giving you the rundown for future whatever if you've got one, and then uh, for the the column way. Look at that scraping; that's beautiful. For this column way, I got a get cup as well. Now these had uh, sight glass oilers where you fill up the reservoir and it drip, drip, drips, and those were plastic and they're just junk. And I think this is fine. 
because I am a religious oiler. I oil things every time I use it. So that's good. Um, posted a comment to Brian Block. He's got a Giddings and Lewis, either a, a 330 or a 340, I forget which, bigger machine. And he said his machine's always oily because the oil pump oils the vertical column and all the oil runs down on top of it. And if it ain't oily, it ain't running, is what Brian Block said. Uh, so mine's a little different. Uh, the continuous feed oil system does not feed the vertical columns. I guess you could. You could splice in there with a T over there and a T for that one and put in a, uh, a Bezier oiler. But the thing is, the, the Beziers are recirculating into the, uh, the reservoir. If you just did a total loss on the column, that would be worse because you could run this main casting uh, body out of oil. So anyhow, um, I, probably Brian's machine is a larger capacity gear case and it doesn't matter, whatever, I don't know. Um, I tested the run out of the spindle. So, um, it seems like it's got parallel run out, not eccentric run out. Uh, it's got parallel run out on the actual four Morris taper of two thousandths and parallel run out on the bar of one thousandth. Um, and no matter if it's in or extended out, it's about the same. It doesn't change. Um, so that's good. That means it's not been crashed and bent. If the, if the run out with the bar retracted was, you know, a lot less and it was a lot more when the bar was extended, then I'd say somebody crashed it. But it's almost like it's got parallel run out and it might have been just how it was ground in the factory or something. I don't know. But uh, tooth out, the taper's not bad. For drilling, it's okay. For boring, it doesn't matter because boring is single point. So for a machine this old, I think that's pretty good. But as you can see, I got everything. I'm in, I, I've cleaned on and off uh, for a good long time. I mean, with lacquer thinner. Try to clean, clean, clean this thing. It's horrible. Um, one noteworthy thing before I take you over and show you the other stuff. This base, I'll show you if I don't drop the camera. This base is 10 inch channel, C channel, right? Um, I've got it on pieces of wood on the floor now, for, for now. Um, but it makes draining the oil easy. You know, I just drain the oil from there. And uh, it's got 15 gallons of oil in there. Um, I forget what I put in there. I think it was ISO 32. I, I forget. The 68 was from the, uh, the Rockford planer behind me here. Okay, enough distraction. So really what I gotta do is bore out the case for a seal. And I've looked at seals in McMaster Car. Uh, I looked at O-rings, I've looked at U-cup seals. Um, the, the type of seal that is the least amount of boring required is an O-ring. Uh, so I'm gonna try an O-ring first, uh, a 332nd O-ring. Let me take you handheld uh, over, oh, I know we're handheld, over to where I got the casting set up. I got it uh, cleaned in the parts washer and gussied up. So I suppose that's the O-ring I was looking at. And that's the two inch uh, shaft. So there's the one inch shaft goes in there. And this is a uh, 09 point, this is a 332nd point oh nine three inch diameter o-ring. And I'm going to put that in the face of the gear cover. So I, I picked out a boring bar and a boring head. Uh, I've been setting up over here on the mighty uh, SIP, which I believe is an MP5. But anyhow, um, show you my setup. So 
So that's the gear case cover, right? I wonder if this will be better. Hold on, let me find my, hey, all right, now, yeah. my Harbor Freight uh, Super Flashlight. So this is not really on blocks. It, uh, this is just to set it up. Really, let me go around back. If I can, without touching nothing. We got everything blocked and locked. So I got some steel blocks to back up the clamps on the table. I got two strap clamps and uh, basically what I'm going to do is counter bore that bore for an o-ring. So I've got the boring head, sorry about the light, I've got the boring head and I got the little magnetic indicator stand and I'm indicating the bore, I got it within a half thou, so that's more than good. I had set it up initially with the coax indicator and I think something moved a thousandth or whatever so I reset it up. It's a good thing I did. I took a skim cut with the bore and it was a little scraping one side more not the other. Anyhow, so here's where I'm at. Um, Let me put the camera on a tripod and let's open the, f the face up there for my O-ring and uh, we'll show you how this is going to work. Alright guys, got you down uh, on the tripod here. Um, so all this go around is Zero, zero. It's just tickling a tad over zero. So I'm happy with that. And there's some advantage to this setup because it's actually all the monkeying around of tool changing is done, right? So it's actually in situation, in context, whatever you want to call it. So I'm happy with that. Um, now, boring bar. Where did I put the boring bar? Oh, so this is some kind of a drill bit, I think. Um, I think it's the kind of, it's like a drill bit it's not for starting a hole, but for opening a hole. And it's got two, I think they're called triangular trigon inserts. But you see how it stepped down? I turned that down in the lathe. And then I can see where that little set screw mark is. I made these flats on here too in the mill. It was a coolant fed. This was a broken off drill, right? So, I repurposed it into like a boring tool, I guess you'd call it. So that goes up in there. And you always gotta make sure you're on the flat. All right, so that's decent, right? That's decent. So let me come down and touch off. I had this set previously, but I want to double check. I think. Maybe I got the offset way out. I don't know. Um, what am I at? 32 thousandths. So let me go one turn out. 32 thousandths. All right, so here, I'm going to set off the paper, and I know the paper is like four thou. All right, so that's pretty much touching there. I 
I should just barely skim this bore. Let's see what I do. I'm just barely skimming it, and I've got the sound of it contacting all the way around. Super happy about that. So let me dial like a 10 thou cut. Do 20 thou. slow. Let me go get you some more RPMs here. Alright. That seems more better. <laughs> That's it. That was twenty. No, I'm screwing myself up. So zero is twenty, then it's like forty. about 60 about 60. I think I gotta go to 100 or a little bit less. This thing retracts up there. Now let me get my calipers here. And my target goal is two and one eight seven five. Two point one eight seven five. I'm gonna zero my calipers. I'm gonna measure. 
manage the bore. I've got 72 thousands to go. Mm -hmm. 71. 73. 72. Okay, I got like 72 thousands to go. So, Sixty, forty, fifty, sixty. I gotta go seventy two, so I should still be under. It's a good thing I checked because I'm like 10,000 away. So this is a radius graduated, apparently. Not diameter. A minus eight, minus nine, minus eight and a half, minus eight. So if I go four, Back this sucker up, man. I almost screwed this up. All right, so. Ten. Maybe three thou. Precision machine, but a lot of cranking on these hand wheels. It's one of the things I always kind of noticed. Five or four. Four to go. So I'm going to crank in two thou. Nope.
Alright, now I know this is full of cast iron chips, but... I'm looking at zero, 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 zero. Maybe a half a thou over, zero, zero. It's pretty good. My, my calipers are slightly magnetic, which I need to do something about. You know. I need to do something about. They can get in my way. Looks like I'm all zeros. So that should be good. I'm liking that. Maybe you don't got the greatest perspective for what the, what I was doing. And I'm sorry about that, but this tripod does not tilt. So that's what I did. And the reason I did that, I did a face o-ring, not a one in the bore, because there's an, a groove in the surface here, an oil groove. I'll show you when I break this down, but uh, but that's what it is. And that's the job. It was fairly simple, but at least I got to use my SIP jig bore. So uh, let me clean up and then I'll bring you back. All right, guys. Maybe I can do the fitting, <clears throat> fitting in place. So here's that <clears throat> two inch shifter shaft. Okay, here's the O-ring, right? The O-ring. Put that on there. Yeah. So this is a 332nd O-ring. Just happen to have one. They make 16th, 332nd, eighth inch, uh, 316th quarter inch. I like that. Will the O-ring go in the groove? Is the question. I don't know. I don't want to. I'm kind of using my fingernails to push it down. Make sure it goes in there. Make sure it goes into a situation. I'm poking it down. This should work nicely. Just making sure it all goes down. I need like a little gauge block or something to push it. Okay. So that goes in there all the way around. Will it spin? How hard is it to spin it? Oh, that's not bad. It spins just dandy. And like I said, in that bore, there is a, uh, a slot for lubrication, and I don't know why you'd ever do lubricating a shifter hole that never really moves or spins. Um, so that's what I wanted to do. Put that O-ring in there. And the, the other job will be lathe work to put the, uh, the groove in the shaft. So uh, yeah, successful setup on the SIP. How's that? There you go. I should have had the lamp on. But that's good. Let me pull this out. See? That goes in the face there. And then the shifter will hold it on. Oh, I rolled it right in there. Beautiful. 
the shifter will hold that on if there's no end play. And if there is end play, I'll, I'll make a piece of shim stock washer to keep the end play to a minimum. But that should keep it, keep it nice. Good. So that's how that's going to work. All right. Hope you enjoyed uh, seeing how I bored that out on the uh, the mighty sip. Uh, yeah. All right. Do the shot.